All right, today we're going to cover the hatch colorimeter. This is what we use for testing of potable water out in the field uh, during a disaster. This is the kit itself right here, and these are the two associated low standard and high standards. As you open up the kit, you can see the colorimeter here, uh, associated glass files, uh, DPD reagents for total chlorine, and free chlorine. Okay, I've taken most of the stuff out of the uh, the box. As you can see, uh, here are the uh, free chlorine, what they're called uh, pillows, which have the uh, DPD reagent, these little pillows here, which would be used for each particular vial to test for free chlorine. Uh, these are the vials themselves. These two are made out of glass and have a little uh, white diamond on them. The other two are made out of plastic. The uh, two made out of glass are used for the low chlorine range and the two made out of plastic are used for the high chlorine range. The uh, unit itself, we'll go over the parts and pieces in one second. Um, we also have uh, standards that are used as a bump check. You can see here that um, this one would be a blank and as it starts to get darker in the pink color the more chlorine would be. Alright, let's go over some of the uh, parts on the uh, hatch colorimeter. Um, it has a removable lid here which you can take off. The um, sample port is down here so if you had a vial you would take the vial with the uh, indicator here which is uh, the white arrow pointing down or the diamond for the real sample vial. This is actually a blank and that would go into this hole here and that would be lined up center. The uh, cap goes on top to keep any extra light out. Now as far as the uh, the menu functions go on the uh, colorimeter here. The um, you have a power button here, which I'll turn it off for a second. So we've powered off the unit just by a simple, quick touch of this uh, power button here, which is also a backlight. You can click that once, uh, and it comes on. There, this is the menu function button here. You can click the menu function button and it will go over to the top left where it's blinking and it says low range or you can select the toggle button here and it will jump over to high range so you want to make sure you're in the right range for what you're testing so I'm going to punch it back over to low range which is kind of hard to see here and then I'm going to hit select with the menu function now the blue button over here is a zero button uh, basically for zeroing out the uh, particular machine. So before we get started to use the uh, colorimeter, what we're going to do is take the blank sample here and put it into the sample port, put the cap back on it, and we're going to come down here and we are going to zero out this particular instrument with the blank. You push the blue button or the zero button and that will zero out the unit and it should come up reading. Now we can verify our zero results by putting in the blank again as if we were uh, going to zero it. But this time we're going to hit the green button, and this is to analyze the particular material that's in there. It gives us a couple dashes, it comes across, and it is now reading zero. So verification that um, it was zero, and now for the analysis it is also reading zero. Now we're ready to start the analysis for the uh, free chlorine. We need a um, DPW, I mean a DPD free chlorine reagent, and uh, the uh, glass vial. We're going to fill up the glass vial to the 10 milliliter mark and then add our uh, DPD reagent in here. Uh, it should turn pink if there's any chlorine. We're going to shake it for about 20 seconds and then put it on to the um, colorimeter within one minute. As you can see, I filled up the vial with um, the water that we need to test up to the, the line here, the 10 milliliter mark. Now we're going to take the, uh, the DPD packet, rip it on the side here, and gently pour out the contents into the vial. This is water that came right out of the tap so we'll see how much chlorine is actually in the tap water. Not looking like much. We're going to shake it up for about 20 seconds and then we're going to put it into the color meter, colorimeter and analyze it. Well through the magic of television this is slight, turned slightly pink indicating that there's some chlorine residual in here. I'm going to take the diamond put it center in line with the middle of the screen here take the cover put it over the cover and hit the green button for analysis takes about two seconds and we get a 0.95 now the chlorine residual in the state of california cannot be less than 
0.2 or greater than 4.0. So this would be considered potable water. Once you're done, you're going to want to discard this to the sewer and uh, rinse this out with some deionized water so it's nice and clean or some bottled water. Um, so you don't have any uh, chlorine residual left over for your next. Do you have any questions as to if your uh, colorimeter is working co correctly? You can use the um, standards that we purchased. Uh, there's the blank uh, and standard 1, 2, and 3 which indicate different levels. Uh, certificate of analysis is here which also correlates to the blank standard 1, standard 2, and standard 3 and you could come down here and look at the pocket colorimeter 2 come across and this says 0.22 plus or minus 0.09 so if it's within that range for standard number one we know that our colorimeter is working correctly and this is reading at um, 0.18 over here it says that it should be 0.22 plus or minus 0.9 so 0.18 is only um, four away from that so it's working correctly and then we could go up uh, correspondingly on the scale here to ensure that it's uh, working correctly. It's not a calibration it's more of a bump check. Uh, if you need to do uh, return to the factory defaults for calibration we could do that in the manual but it is factory calibrated. It should not need to be calibrated by the user. I do want to remind everybody that there's two basic things that we're going to be looking at for water sampling. Um, one being water at shelters. Um, the approved state hauling tankers that come in for potable water, we want to ensure that those water tankers do have adequate chlorine residuals. That is one of our responsibilities to check the chlorine residuals. The other being uh, checking um, small, water symptoms, uh, small water systems for chlorine residuals also, but also to take uh, samples for bacterial analysis. Uh, and there are specific uh, water sampling protocols that um, are on the S drive under the disaster. This is the water sampling protocols in the, uh, the disaster plan here, developed by Land and Water Quality and uh, the DOC basically, which uh, specifies you know, sample holding times, water uh, sample chain of custodies, uh, how to take a sample, what sample containers are needed, uh, dechlorinating agents. Um, sterilizing agents to uh, sterilize the taps and whatnot uh, as we've practiced in previous trainings. Um, if you have any questions regarding this you can get a hold of uh, land and water quality regarding the um, aseptic sampling procedures. Well, That about sums it up for using the hatch uh, pocket colorimeter and um, I hope this uh, little training vi video makes it um, makes you a little bit more comfortable with the system and easier to use out in the field. Thanks.